The purpose of this short video is to demonstrate the capabilities of the new connector framework, which has been added to workspace management product in 2014's RESPAC to release. Step by step, we create a brand new connector for importing data from the external system. In order to keep your focus on the new framework rather than the logic of the implemented connector, I have picked a very simple use case and decided to implement a connector for importing exchange rates for the active currencies. I hope you already have a general understanding of principles of the new connector framework. Otherwise, please visit Metrics 42 online help. Following the tutorial for creation of the new connectors, we are going to carry out the following steps. First of all, we need to figure out the product data model, which is need to be filled with data. Then we need to find and analyze the source of the data, how the source is correlated with our data model, and which operations need to be done for adjusting this data. Then we need to create and publish two workflows, one for collecting data from the integrated system to a package, and another one for processing this package on server and importing the collected data to the production database. Then we need, of course, create an object for our new connector, which we will use for activating the import operation and monitoring result of the execution. And next goes without saying, we need to assure that the new connector works as expected and sets the right data to the right. So let's start our new connector from modeling of the data source. At first, we are going to review the configuration item we want to update. After that, we will try to find a web service which provides up-to-date exchange rates for any possible currency. Once we have done it, we will try to correlate uh, service data to our data model. Let's have a look to currency exchange rates which are available in the product. On the master data workspace, there is currency exchange rates tabulator where all rates delivered out of the box could be found. You see, the most recent data you find here is for the beginning of the year, what to say the least, a little bit outdated. Not, now let's uh, find the currencies which are active in the system. Now you see active currencies present in the system. So you see there are quite a lot. So and our task is to import exchange rates between all of them. So now let's go to the schema editor to analyze uh, configuration item currency. Let's type currency. Here we are, currency configuration item. Here we find term three data definition definition and one which int interests us the most that currency exchange rate what is multi-fragment for in our currency configuration item here we find five mandatory attributes which we need to import so let's collect all of them in one document let's call it connector source datum model. And list the attributes. We need ask, we need bit, date, as well we need source currency code, and target code. Okay, let's make it simple, just target code and rename source to source code. Yes, that's how our source from our connectors should look like. Once we have a general understanding of, of what kind of data we need for our connector, let's proceed to the browser and try to find the web service which provides us with such a data. So let's type as much keywords we know about regarding our data. So we need currency exchange. It's nice to have REST API and of course we want it for free. Okay, let's open the first link. It's stackoverflow.com. Pretty much good site 
for finding answers for technical questions. Okay, let's proceed to answers. Good to wait for answers. And we have three options. First one return CSV file. We don't need it. We want to get JSON. Let's follow the link and check the results. So we get an XML. Not what we like, but data looks good. Here we have a special editor to adjust our URL to return the data we need. Let's have patience. Yes, here are the, the editor. So we want to get JSON data. We don't need diagnostic data in our response. Let's switch off and run the test. Here we get the result in JSON format and here a special view, tree view, for better overviewing of the data. So we we'll get these two rates and now let's test for some exotic uh, currency and let's take Ukrainian hryvnia as an example and try to get the rates between Euro and hryvnia. Yes, here we are, we get the rates which are valid for now, looks pretty good. So let, for now let's uh, copy our URL and prepare it for our connector. So format JSON is keywords to get the respon response in JSON format, let's copy it. <laughs> it's pretty difficult, let's copy it from the Take overflow site, it's formatted and it collects all this data in our text document. Our REST API URL, copy it and let's trim the data we don't need and add what we need. Format JSON and remove all this currency codes we don't need. In our connector, of course, we generate these pairs uh, in our in our workflow. Let's copy it and insert in browser and go and assure that the data which are returned fits our format we are looking for. Exactly what we have expected. Looks, we have everything to proceed with authoring of the connector workflows. And at first we start with data collector workflow, the main purpose of which to read data from integrated system, packing them to the connector package and send it to the server. We are going to use new data collector workflow template to create a new workflow. Then use one of the integration activity to fetch the data and then fold this data to the package. Let's come back to the console, to the workflow tabulator and open workflow studio. In Workflow Studio, let's proceed to the new tabulator and create the new workflow from the template Connector Data Collector Workflow Template. Now let's rename our new workflow to the Currency Exchange Connector Data Collector. and save the workflow. So new workflow is created and out of the box we get some general data collector workflow logic. So we have reading of the configuration data, creating the new package activity data and sending the package to the server. So our task to fill uh, connector package activity with some data. Let's try to do it. So we need activity for reading active uh, currencies from our database. For that reason, we, use, we will use get multiple records. And we want to store these um, active connectors codes in uh, collection. We, we have two collection, one collection for, for storing active codes and another collection of strings for storing connection code pairs. 
So let's create this collection. So as I said, collection of strings, changes in type to string, and let's give them some meaningful names. First one, as I said, active currency codes. And second one, let's call it currency code pairs done so for now we have two variables for our collections and let's fill them with correct data let's configure our get multiple records activity to read our current active currency codes so we read it from the sps currency class base and we read only active currencies it's active true and we need to read currency code let's store the data to the new variable and call it currency code let's open get multiple records body and try to add currency code data to our collection for that reason we use add to collection activity at first we need to set the type we are going to add to the collection of strings and we need to define the collection to avoid mistakes let's copy it from the variables list active currency codes And we need to add data to the collection currency code so we have filled our first collection with data and now we need to add data to second collections so for the second collection we need to make a different combination of pairs and language of math we need to create the cortesian set for that reason we use for which variable, for which activity, where we'll iterate our active currencies, active currency code col uh, collection. So, so we are iterating the data which was previously already added to this collection and add to the another collection. different combination so let's make it again we are using add to collection activity and we need to select again collection of strings and define the new collection again let's copy it from the variables And here, as I said, we need to create pairs in different combination. Let's make an exp visual basic expression, currency co code plus item. Item, that's the value of current collection we are iterating. And also we need to create one more value Previously, it, we, we added currency code plus item, and now we need to change the order and add item plus currency code.
Okay, so now our collection with currency codes is prepared and we can care about ge generating of the URL. So let's lift up to the connector package activity level. Okay, here. And try to do it. At first we need to check that at least one pair, pair of codes is present for that we can use as usually flow decision activity and to check whether at, at least element of collection is present. Okay, if at least one is there, then we let's use assign activity to generate URL. Let's change the display name for the activity to set URL. And also we need to create a variable where we want to obtain our URL. Let's call it URL. And let's assign string to this URL. Let's follow to the text document we previously prepared and copy the URL. So now we need to insert our pairs instead of our fake data. You remove this USD URL. And using our collection we previously prepared currency codes pairs and using string join function which concatenates our collection to string using defined delimiter. The limit is the first argument of the function. Okay, should be okay. Let's save our workflow. And now we need to send a request to our service to get the data. For that reason, we are going to use a new activity, which is called HTTP send activity. Purpose of this activity is self-explainable. Using this activity, you can configure HTTP request of any complexity, send it, get response, and cause response data to the variable of the specified type. So let's now trim our workflow, workflow layout to look better. Okay. So here let's define the display name. We want to send and receive JSON. We can specify headers of our request. Okay, don't need it. It's it for that case and let's define URL and we want to save our response to variable of system JSON type with name response JSON okay done once we get the response from our activity we need to save the data we obtained from the web service to package. For that reason we use new activity at connector package item. This activity has two mandatory properties. One of them is 
object type. It's just a pickup value which explains which kind of data are stored in package item. So at first, let's create this pick this pickup value. Let's go to our schema, find this pickup package item type, and add the new record. Let's call it currency rate and set some unique value. Okay, pickup is updated and now this value need to be available in our workflow studio for selection. Yes, it is here. And we need to define an input. Input expects just any variable of enum which inter support enumerable interface. And let's just add our JSON, which keeps collection of JSON objects. So for now, workflow is ready and we can release this workflow. Once we have released and published our data collector workflow, we can proceed our connector implementation with creating import workflow. Usually, these steps are including referencing of our data collector workflow, extracting the package, and running appropriate import definition for each connector package item. So let's come back to our workflow studio and create the new workflow from the workflow template connector import. As usually, let's give meaningful name and call it currency change connector. The same way as for the data collector workflow, we get quite a good piece of logic out of the workflow template. And only a few amendments need to be done to make our import workflow complete. So we already have activity for reading configuration, setup visualization steps, uh, running our data collector workflow, extracting the package, and activity which running procession of our package. So let's configure running of our data collector workflow. So here we have a parallel activity with two branches. One branch is for running client workflow and another branch is for termination in case if running client workflow takes too much time. So in the first workflow property, let's select workflow we just created. Let's type it currency and find our currency exchange connector data workflow. When we select our workflow, it automatically creates a list of arguments which need to be filled. Configuration info object is input argument of our import workflow. So let's define, define it for the client workflow. Has result and result command is output arguments of our client workflow and let's define the values to is package delivered variable and collecting data result comment variable which we get in workflow from workflow template so now we have our run client workflow activity configured and we can proceed to the next steps Our import workflow is not 100% ready, but it already can run client workflow, get the package and extract the package. And now I recommend to release this version of the import workflow in order to get uh, our um, package items. And then we can proceed with creating of the import definition. In order to start import workflow, 
we need to configure connector object. For that, we need to create an object, create a configuration object, enable this object, and then only activate our import operation. For that, let's go to the administration workspace, to the data provider of tabulator, and create a new object. Let's call it currency exchange rates. It will be the name of our connector. Okay, then we need to define workflow, which will, will be implemented for, for each activation and select our import workflow, which we have just released. Then we need to add our configuration item. As far as this use case, uh, we are implementing does not require the additional settings. It is enough to use uh, the default configuration form. But for the sake of the demo, we create a custom configuration form which configures the URL of the web service endpoint. To do that, we create a data definition and configuration item which keeps the settings. First, uh, create the data definition and define the attribute URL, which is mandatory, and that's actually enough. Then proceed to this configuration item and create the configuration. Uh, we are creating uh, ordinary CI, which is used the data definition, so we don't use the simple, simple form and specify the data definitions, the data definition for currency exchange configuration form we just created. Also, we, it is mandatory to include the basic configuration form class base for generic connector. And of course, uh, a common class base. Also, we need to specify for CI display expression. Let's show the URL. So now we are done with configuration item and we could proceed with the user interface. So we need to create a dialog which represents this configuration item. So let's proceed to the user interfaces dialogs, create the new dialog and specify the configuration item we just created and provide the name for the dialog. Okay, it's enough, so done, and the system automatically starts layout designer where we can build our layout. To the dialog, we need to include not only our custom uh, attributes, in this case URL, but also the mandatory attributes which are uh, appropriate for each uh, configuration form. That is an agent, Link to the data gateway which will execute the connector. Um, also, we need to, uh, to, to have a enable attribute to description and, of course, uh, URL attribute which is custom for connector. And of course, uh, also credentials for username, password. In our use case, we don't use it, but let's add them as well. And now we need to associate our configuration form with our data provider. Uh, for that, uh, in database, please select uh, our data provider record and you could see there is a special attribute which is now. Now we need to set the name of our configuration item uh, which associated with the configuration form to this attribute and update database. Now we let's start the data provider again and you could see that uh, on adding configuration form the new dialog is started and we can provide here uh, configuration for data provider and save it and yes you could see uh, our custom form is displayed and our connector 
now is fully configured. So let's now enable our connector and activate it. And let's proceed to the workflow instance to see how our workflow is started and how it's proceed. Now you could see it's completed. Inside we find XML document which collects all properties of our response JSON object, but structure not exactly what we are expecting to get. The reason is pretty clear. We are not correctly save this response JSON object to a package item. Okay, let's try to fix it. Let's go back to our workflow studio and open our data collector workflow, check out it, create the new version and proceed to our add package, add package item activity. And check our input property definition. Here we have this response JSON. At first we need to understand the structure of the JSON which returned from the service. For that reason, let's open Development Studio for Chrome and run the query again. And Network Tabulator, we can see our JSON which returned in structured way. So the structure is pretty clear. We have in query, then we have sub collection results, and in the results we have collection of rates. So let's define it the same way in this activity. So getting the query, then getting the sub-collection results, and then get rates. So for now, our data is structured better. Let's check in this version of the workflow and try execute our connector again. Go back to the console and find our connector object and run activate action again. Again, open our configuration object to monitor workflow execution. It's still suspended. Let's wait for a while until it's completed. Okay, while workflow is executing, let's back to workflow explorer and to check the content of the file. For now, you see new file is already updated and we get the structure of the XML much better. So for now, let's compare the structure of the XML with the structure we're expecting to get. In the first glance, we see that source code and target code is not present, but we have this ID, which is a concatenation of target and source code. Let's create the new version of our data collector workflow and try to adjust our data to provide the target target and source code as uh, dedicated XML elements. To adjust input data for add connector package activity, I'm going to use webet.net link query instructions, what is very powerful feature for working with collection in .NET. In this query, I can use uh, any web.net function and I'm using substring function to split data which are kept in ID property. So first three letters of the ID property I am assigned to the target code. And last three letters I'm assigned to source code. And rest of the JSON object data I'm just adding to the collection.
So query is ready. Again, let's save and release the new version of the data collector workflow. And again, find connector object and activate the import operation. Wait for completion of the workflow and then check the new result. Okay, now it's ready and we can again check the content. Okay, so now we have target code, we have source code, we have rate, we have ask, bit, and date. So for now our data source is ready and we can start with creating of import definition. So let's copy the relation path to our data, which always kept in the last result. So we can always reference to this uh, file from our GDI. Go to the console, administration, workspace, and go to the import definition tabulator and run create new import definition wizard. Okay, our data source is XML file and we're going to change currency object. Now we need to define the reference to our path and we have them in clipboard. So let's insert, adjust a little bit the path. Let's modify our incoming source of data, define the the path of objects it is slash objects slash object and now we can preview our incoming data data looks good and we can proceed next so we are going to, to add multi fragments so for that reason we select multi fragments and now we can add mapping rules for our import definition let's start from the source code and assign our source code to the currency code in our exchange rate multi fragment Then we're creating the mapping rules for all our source data and map, map them to the data in our data model in production database. To define the date, we will use the new feature of the GDI and use transformation, where we can define a SQL expression 
and use get data function to define the date. Now our GDI's mapping is ready and we can proceed to the next step. Here we are defined that we only update our currency object and we are inserting multi fragments to the exchange rates multi fragment. The only what needs to be done is to define the name for new import definition and let's call it currency exchange connector import. And our import definition is ready. So for now, the only thing we need to do to make our connector finished, we need to modify our import workflow and to define a running of, of GDI. For that reason, let's check out our workflow and add new activity to the process package activity. Use execute GDI sequence and in for GDI sequence property, let's define import definition definition we just created. And for the file, we take the item dot file, save it, check in it, and our import workflow is ready for the final execution. Again, repeat the procedure for running our connector, find the currency object and action activate. And wait until our import workflow instance is finished. It is finished. And now we can check results our, of our connector execution. It's successful. In import logs, you find the import definition logs for, of the last workflow execution. And on the steps tabulator, we can see how many objects were impacted with the last run and how many data was inserted. Here we see that 90 new rates have been created. And now let's go to the master data currency change rates tabulator to check the new data. So for now you see that uh, new rates are imported and we can check it in currency view. Let's open euro and to check the new rates for USD. Okay, new exchange rates are imported. Let's run our connector one more time to, che to, to check that the new data is arrived. Exchange rates changing quite frequently and we can see that connector is working correctly. Okay. The execution is finished and now we can see the new portion of exchange rates more up to date. Okay, so for now we see that USD is getting more expensive than Euro just in a few seconds. And for now we see that our connector is working as expected. And let's check that not active currency is not updated with exchange rates and only active currencies are updated. That's view for the for the PLN currency. Okay, thank you very much for your attention. That's